Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Bowls, another video short for you guys, this time on the Black Eyed Leucistic Complex. Um, looking down the list of genes here, some of these may actually be fairly unfamiliar to many of you. I think um, most of you will have heard of Disco, Fire, uh, Vanilla and possibly Sulphur, but uh, Bright, Flame, Lemonback, um, they're all part of the same complex and may not actually be familiar to most, they're not familiar to me either and a lot of these are probably quite similar to fire. For instance, sauce and sulphur are probably just lines of fire. And we do get white snakes from this. We do get leucistic snakes, just the same as we did with the blue-eyed leucistic complex. Uh, the super form of fire, for instance, produces a white snake with some yellow patches. Um, so it is possible to produce a leucistic snake uh, by producing the super form of fire. Um, sulfur will also produce a black-eyed leucistic. Um, but for me, the interesting part of this complex, and this is where some of these ball python complexes get really interesting when you work with them, is the allelic reactions that you get when you breed snakes together. And we're going to look at the genetic combination required to make a vanilla cream. This is the combination of fire and vanilla. Um, many of you will also have heard of the Disco Inferno, which is Disco and Fire mixed together. Very similar allelic reaction there and a very similar looking snake. So let's have a quick look at what's needed to make a vanilla cream. This is your base morph Fire, which we're going to use in trying to make a vanilla cream or vanilla scream. And this is the fire side of the equation. You can see the pattern reduction, um, the slightly banded pattern here, uh, the reduction in the alien heads, and particularly at the tail end where the alien heads have... Sorry about the blood in the tub she just ate yesterday, so I'm not going to pick her up. But you can see how at the tail end of the snake all the alien heads are amalgamated into one long block of colour. Um, the very strong dorsal at the tail, that is typical of fire, and the pattern is also typical of fire. You can see the head stamp, the arrowhead shape of a fire head stamp. So this is fire, this is our base morph. This is actually a very chunky uh, het for lavender female that we're going to be using to try to make cherry bombs again this year. Uh, she laid a clutch of eggs last year. Um, she's recovered very well, but we didn't get any cherry bombs last year. We're going to have another go this year with a visual lavender male to reduce the, uh, the odds, increase the probability of the cherry bomb. But this is the fire side of the equation when we want to make our vanilla cream. And of course, true to form, I do not have a base vanilla to show you guys, uh, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a pastel vanilla, which is what this guy here is. You can see that it has the typical pastel pattern, uh, but is a much, much softer, more yellowy coloured animal than a pastel would be. All those harsh colours have gone. Uh, vanilla has softened and made this animal much, much creamier. And we know it's pastel vanilla, rather than just pastel also from the head stamp. When we mix pastel with vanilla, we get a very blushed head stamp, much more blushed than pastel on its own would be. So this is pastel vanilla, so we actually would stand a chance of making vanilla screams as well as vanilla creams. A vanilla cream is a fire vanilla. A vanilla scream is a pastel fire vanilla. So those are examples of fire and vanilla that we're going to use to make our vanilla cream. Let's go ahead and make a vanilla cream. Let's work out what the odds are and how the genetics work. So we're going to use blue for vanilla. Uh, so this snake here has got one copy of vanilla on its genetic code. And again, because this is sexual reproduction. Only half of the genetic code from one parent is supplied to the infant, the other half from the other parent. So we split the genetic code in half and you'll see that one half does not carry the vanilla gene and one half does. We'll do the same with the other snake and it doesn't matter which is the male and the female, but we'll use red for fire in this case. And again, same thing. We split the genetic material in half. 
half of the genetic material carries no copy of fire and the other half of the genetic material carries a copy of fire. Doesn't matter what the sexes are, male, female, doesn't really matter, it's interchangeable. But you will see that because these two genes are in the same complex, they actually occupy the same address on the genetic code. We can treat them together, just as if we were using two copies of pastel to produce a super pastel. Uh, these genes also occupy the same genetic address on the parent's genetic code, and so we treat them together. So, let's take this half of, let's assume this is the male and this is the female, we'll take this half of the male which isn't carrying the vanilla gene, and we'll pair to this half of the female which is fire, and we get one copy of fire. We take this half of the male and pair to this half of the female which is not carrying any copies of anything, so here we get no copies of anything. We take this half of the male which is carrying the vanilla gene and pair to this half of the female which is carrying the fire gene and we get one copy, one copy of fire and one copy of vanilla. This is the super form, this is our vanilla cream. And we take this half of the male and pair to this half of the female and we get one copy of vanilla. So again, as in any of these genetic outcomes, there are only four possible outcomes, and in this case, breeding a vanilla to a fire, we get one fire, one vanilla, one normal, and one vanilla cream for every four babies. So your allelic vanilla cream combo is a one in four chance. Once you've created that animal, because they occupy the same genetic address, here is our vanilla cream. That's this guy that we produced down here. This is what it looks like genetically. When you breed a vanilla cream and you split the genetic code in half, as with any allelic combination, one half carries one gene, the other half carries the other gene. So the babies will receive one copy of one gene or the other and you will not be able to produce a normal. So here's our vanilla cream and if we pair that we're going to get fires and vanillas, no normals. Okay guys, so the vanilla cream is just like any other allelic complex or any other super form for that matter. Uh, when you breed uh, the super form or the allelic complex you will not get a normal all the snakes will carry one gene or the other uh, so that's an advantage in working with allelic complexes and for those of you that are interested in fire and vanilla I get lots of questions about vanilla because I know many people are not working with it so we're going to have a more in-depth look at the differences between fire and vanilla in both non-clowns and clowns and I'll show you how to identify fire from vanilla, what fire does and what vanilla does and how it's best used and in particular we're going to look at some awesome clown combinations that have vanilla in them so that you can see just what a superb gene both fire and vanilla is when you mix it with clowns. So thanks for watching, don't forget to share, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.